Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Factors. Here we take up MCQs based on important articles and news from the Hindu and the Indian Express newspaper. Topics that we are going to discuss are displayed on your screen. Let's begin the discussion. Let's start our session with the first question based on this article from the Hindu newspaper. According to this article, recently Supreme Court has said that religious conversions by means of force, allowment or fraud may ultimately affect the security of the nation and freedom of religion and conscience of citizens. Now, as you all know, part 3 of the constitution, which entailed fundamental rights, which is also known as Magna Carta of India, is important for your prelims examination. And this can be seen from this question based on fundamental rights came in year 2020. Now, let's come to the practice question. Question says, right to freedom of religion under part 3 of the constitution of India comprises which of the following? The first one is freedom of conscience and free profession, practice and propagation of religion. Now, as you all know, the constitution of India guarantees the right to freedom of religion to not only individuals but also religious group in India. And this is enshrined in Article 25 to 28. And this statement is Article 25. That is freedom of conscience and free profession, practice and propagation of religion. Now let's come to the second statement. Conversion from one religion to another brought about by coercion or undue influence shall not be recognized by law. This statement is incorrect. Why? Because this was discussed in the Constituent Assembly to be included under the chapter on fundamental rights, but was ultimately not included. So this is not part of right to freedom of religion. With this, our correct answer is option C. Now let's come to the third one. Freedom of every religious domination or any section to manage their religious affair. This is article 26 and another important fact which you should know that this is subject to public order, morality and health. Now the last one is freedom as to attendance at religious instruction or religious worship in certain educational institutions. Now this is article 28 and article 27 is Freedom as to payment of taxes for promotion of any particular religion. You should always remember that this fundamental right is enshrined in Articles 25 to 28 that we have already discussed. Now, answer of this practice question is option D that is right to equality. Now, let's come to the next question based on this article from the Hindu newspaper. According to this article, recently India announced its long-term strategy to transition to a low-emission pathway at the COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh, which is premised on expanding its nuclear power capacity by at least threefold in the next decade. Apart from becoming an international hub for producing green hydrogen and increasing the proportion of ethanol in petrol. Now, as you know, Nuclear power is one of the recurring theme in UPSC prelims examination. Like this question came in year 2019. Now let's come to the practice question. Here you are provided with two columns. First is nuclear power plant and the second is location. And here you have to find out the correct pair. The first one is Kaiga. Now as you can see, Kaiga generating station is a nuclear power generating station situated at Kaiga near the river Kali in Uttara Karnada district of Karnataka. So it's not in Gujarat, it's in Karnataka. So this option is incorrect. The next one is Kalpakka or you can say Madras Atomic Power Station. It is a comprehensive nuclear power production, fuel reprocessing and waste treatment facility that includes plutonium fuel fabrication for fast breeder reactor. Another important fact which you should know that it is India's first fully indigenously constructed nuclear power station. So this pair is correct as Kalapakkam is in Tamil Nadu. Third one is Tarapur. Tarapur is located in Palghar district in Maharashtra. It was the first commercial nuclear power station built in India. So this pair is correct. So with this our correct answer is option B that is 2 and 3 only. Answer of this PYQ is option B, that is Russia. 
Now the inspiration of our next question is from this article from the Hindu newspaper. According to this article, India's wholesale price inflation slipped below 10% for the first time in 19 months this October when it eased to 8.4% from 10.7% in September and it is because of base effects and cooling commodity prices. As you all know, question based on important indexes for example, consumer price index or wholesale price index is one of the recurring theme in UPSC prelims examination like this question came in year 2020-20. Now let's come to the practice question. Question says, consider the following statements related to the wholesale price index and consumer price index. First statement is, both WPI and CPI are published by the National Statistical Office that is NSO. Now this statement is incorrect. Why? Because WPI is published by Office of Economic Advisor and the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. While CPI is published by National Statistical Office. So first statement is incorrect. Now let's come to the second statement. The increase in food prices would have a higher impact on CPI as compared to WPI. Now this statement is correct as once there is an increase in food prices, CPI would be more impacted as the weightage of food is higher in the consumer price index than in the wholesale price index. So our second statement is correct. Now let's come to the third statement. RBI has been mandated to target CPI rather than WPI. This statement is correct. Why? Because according to RBI notification, inflation rate will be based on the final combined consumer price index. And this final combined consumer price index will be used as a reference CPI with a lag of 3 months. So for example, the final combined CPI for month September 2022 will be used as reference CPI for the whole of December 2022. So with this, our correct answer is option D, that is 2 and 3 only. And if you can eliminate the first one, then easily you can find the right answer. An answer of this P by Q is option A, that is 1 and 2 only. Now, inspiration of our next question is from this article. And this article is on the importance of Persian language which used to be the official language of courts and commerce in Jammu and Kashmir until 1889 when Urdu replaced it under Maharaja Pratap Singh, the third Dogra ruler. Now, as you know, part 17 of the constitution is important for your UPSC prelims examination and this can be seen from the question based on classical language which came in year 2014. Now, let's come to the practice question. Question says, with reference to provisions related to languages in the constitution of India, consider the following statements. The first one is, the form of numerals to be used for the official purposes of the union has to be the Devanagari form of numerals. Now to answer this, one should know brief about what is part 17 of the constitution. Part 17 of the constitution deals with the official language in articles 343 three, to 351. Its provisions are divided into four heads. First one is language of the union, second regional languages, third language of the judiciary and the last one is text of laws and special directives. Now according to the Indian constitution under article 343, Hindi written in Devanagari script is to be the official language of the union. But the form of numerals to be used for the official purposes of the union has to be the international form of international numerals and not the Devanagari form of numerals. So first statement is incorrect. It has to be international form of numerals, not Devanagari. Now let's come to the second statement. The constitution does not specify the official language of different states and provides for English as official language until the states decide otherwise. This statement is correct. Why? Because according to article 345, it mentions that the legislature of a state may adopt any one 
or more of the languages in use in the state or Hindi as the official language of that state. Until that it's done, English is said to be continued as official language of that state. So this statement is correct. So with this, our correct answer is option B, that is 2 only. Answer of this PYQ is option C, that is 2 and 3 only. Now our next question is based on this article from the Hindu newspaper. This article is related to the idol wing of the Tamil Nadu police. It is one of the unique initiatives by any state government in India to bring back lost or stolen idols from the state. Many Chola, Pandava era idols have been brought back by this police unit. And you all know Tamil Nadu is rich in Chola and Pandava era idols which worth several crores of rupees in the international market. Many ancient idols is more than 1000 years old. So the key takeaway from this article is the importance of sculpture which is one of the important subsection under art and architecture and you can see that UPSC has been asking questions based on famous work of sculpture like this came in year 2014. Now let's come to the practice question. Question says with reference to Indian bronze sculpture consider the following statements. The first one is sculpture depicting Jain Tirthankara's Adinath with long hair locks dropping to his shoulders has been found from Akota near Vadodara. Now this statement is incorrect. Why? Because interesting images of Jain Tirthankaras have been discovered from Chausa, which used to be in Bihar belonging to the Kushanas period during the 2nd century CE. And remarkable is the depiction of Adinath or Vrishubhnath who is identified with long hair locks dropping to his shoulders. Otherwise, the Tirthankaras are noted by their short curly hairs. So our first statement is incorrect. Second is, sculptures of new format in which Tirthankaras are seated on a throne are found from Chausa Bihar. Now again, this statement is incorrect because the hoard of bronze discovered in Akota near Vadodra established that bronze casting was practiced in Gujarat or Western India between the 6th to 9th centuries. And most of the images represent the Jain Tirthankaras like Mahavira, Parshanath or Adinath. And a new format was invented in which the Tirthankaras are seated on a throne. So again, second statement is incorrect. Now let's come to the third statement. Portability of bronze sculpture was a remarkable feature of Wakataka bronze. Now this statement is correct because Wakataka bronze images of the Buddha from Maharashtra are contemporary with the Gupta period bronze. So they show the influence of the Amravati style of Andhra Pradesh in the 3rd century CE. And the additional importance of the Gupta and Wakataka bronzes is that they were portable and monks carried them from one place to place for the purpose of individual worship or to be installed in the Buddhist Viharas. So with this, our correct answer is option C, that is 3 only. And answer of this PYQ is option C, that is 1 and 3 only. Now our next question is based on this article from the Indian Express. This article is about the latest World Bank report titled Financing India's Infrastructure Needs, Constraints to Commercial Financing and Prospects for Policy Action. And according to the report, India needs to spend $840 billion to meet urban population needs. And as you all know, UPSC has been asking questions based on international institutions or initiatives taken by them. For example, this question based on global infrastructure facility came in year 2014. Now let's come to the practice question. Here you have to find out the correct statement. First one is, International Development Association, that is IDA, promotes foreign direct investment into developing countries to help support economic growth and reduce poverty. Now, before finding out the right answer, let me briefly tell you about World Bank. As you all know, it is one of the five institutions created at Bretton Woods in 1944, of which India was a founding member. And it comprises of four institutions. The first one is IBRD, that is International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Second is IDA, that is International Development Association. Third is IFC, that is International Finance Corporation. And the last is Multilateral Investment Guarantee. So these four are 
institution under World Bank. Now the first statement, International Development Association promotes foreign direct investment. Now this statement is incorrect because this is done by Multilateral Investment Guarantee. Multilateral Investment Guarantee promotes FDI into developing countries to help support economic growth, reduce poverty and improve people's life. So first statement is incorrect. Now let's come to the second statement. International Bank for Reconstruction and Development provides commercial or concessional loans to only sovereign states or projects backed by sovereign states. Now this statement is correct because IBRD provides loan to only sovereign states or projects backed by sovereign states and these loans are aimed to improve transportation and infrastructure, education, healthcare, etc. So with this our correct answer is option B. Now let me tell you about other two also. This IDA that is International Development Association helps the world's poorest country by providing interest-free loans and grants for programs that boost economic growth. And this IFC that is International Finance Corporation it is the largest global development institution focused on the private sector in developing countries. And correct answer of this PYQ is option B. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more such updates.